This little Christmas gnome is made with Dollar Tree socks and a mop head. To start with, I'm filling a tall gray sock with two cups of rice. I'm filling a measuring cup with the rice, then pulling the opening of the sock over top and pouring the rice inside. I'm tying the top of the sock into a knot and cutting off the top. I'm using this Dollar Tree mop head for the gnome's beard and I'm pulling a bunch of the mop strands out and cutting them in half. I'll be using this wood bead for the nose and I'm just lining it up on the sock to see where I want to place the beard. And now I'm gluing the curved mop head strands onto the sock in the formation of a beard. And now it's time to glue the bead down for the nose. To make the beard look more realistic, I'm unwinding each of the strands. I'm just pulling apart each strand, but if you wanted a fluffier looking beard, you could also brush through all the strands once you're finished unwinding them. I decided he needed a bit more stuffing, so I'm adding some more rice to the sock. And instead of tying the sock into a knot, I'm using an elastic band to tie it together. I thought the knot was just a little too big, so I like the look of the elastic much better. For the gnome's hat, I'm using this red and white striped sock. I'm folding the top of the sock down inside itself to hide the maple leaf, which is not very Christmassy. And now I'm pulling the sock on top of his head. Before I glue down the hat, I'm adding a bell to the end of the hat with some red and white striped twine. I cut off the tip of the sock just because I didn't want that much gray showing, but the bell ends up covering most of the end anyway, so it doesn't really matter. I'm threading the twine through the bell and tying it in place, then tying that onto the end of the hat. I'm pulling the hat down. I want it to go right down to the top of the nose. To keep the hat in place, I'm pulling it down, then putting dabs of hot glue all around. I'm now trimming some excess fabric from the sock all around the bell. And now I'm giving our gnome a little beard trim. I wanted to add more detail to his hat, so I'm gluing on these little berries and greenery. For my next Christmas gnome, I'm going to use a very similar technique to the mop head gnome, but this time I'm using wool for his beard. Again, I'm filling a tall gray sock with rice. I'm putting in about two and a half cups into this sock right now, and then I'm tying off the top with an elastic band. To make the beard, I'm using this white yarn and I'm wrapping it around this box 50 times. This box is about 8 inches long. You could also use a piece of cardboard or anything else you have. Now that I've wrapped it around 50 times, I'm sliding the yarn off the box. I'm now taking another piece of yarn and tying it around this bundle of yarn to keep my loop in place. And now I'm cutting through one side of the loop. And this will be the bottom section of the beard. I'm arranging the yarn and the bead on the sock without gluing anything down yet, just to see where I want everything to go. I cut some more strands of yarn the same length, and I'm adding them above the nose for the mustache, and also to fill out the sides of the beard. And now it's time to glue everything down onto the sock.
I thought he needed a bit more rice, so I'm adding that in now. The nice thing about the sock only being tied together with an elastic and not being glued or sewed shut is you can take out or add rice anytime before adding on the hat. It all depends on the shape and size of the gnome you're going for. Now for the hat, I'm using this sparkly red sock I found at Dollar Tree. I'm pulling it over his head. I'm tying the end of the hat off with some red and white twine, just like I did with the mop head gnome. But this time, instead of one large red bell, I'm tying on two small silver bells. I'm going to add more details to the hat, but first I'm gluing it in place with hot glue. Now for the side of the hat, I'm adding some leaves, greenery, and white berries, and I'm going to hot glue them all in place. Now I'm trimming the beard until it's the length and shape I want. To make my air dry clay Christmas ornaments, I'm using this clay from Crayola. I'm taking about a handful of clay at a time and kneading it between my palms to warm it up. Now I'm rolling the clay out on a piece of parchment paper. I didn't have my rolling pin on hand, so I'm just using this Dollar Tree vase that I had nearby to roll it out, making the clay about four millimeters thick. For my first design, I'm making a star. This is a piece of a Dollar Tree Christmas ornament and I'm using it as a template. If you have cookie cutters, you could definitely use those, but I don't have any Christmas cookie cutters right now, so I'm just using what I have and it totally works. I'm using a tiny bit of water on my finger and smoothing the front and edges of the star. I'm poking a hole at the top of the ornament with a skewer and this will be where we thread the ribbon through to hang it on the tree. So make sure to poke the hole before your ornament dries. I'm using my Cricut Weeder tool to add designs to my star. You could also use the end of a skewer. I'm drawing a flower design in the middle along with some short lines around the edges and little dots to finish it off. I'm making a couple different trees starting with this one. I'm cutting out two basic triangle tree shapes. I'm adding little designs on the trees again with my weeder tool. On one of them, I'm adding dots and horizontal lines. And then on the other one, I'm doing lots of little diagonal lines. The next ornament is a bell shape and I'm using this wood bell from Dollar Tree as my guide. I'm tracing around the edges with a knife, then peeling and cutting away the excess clay. I have a bit of water on my finger and I'm again smoothing the edges and the top of the ornament. You don't wanna to use too much water here, just a tiny bit will do the trick. Now I'm adding all my designs onto the bell. For the next ornament, I'm drawing a more traditional looking Christmas tree. I have this fake leaf from a dollar store and I'm pressing it into the clay over top of my tree shape. You could also use a real leaf for this if you wanted. I'm pressing the leaf into the clay enough that it makes an imprint, but not too hard that I squish down the clay too much. I'm lifting up the leaf, then pressing it down in different places around the tree. And now I'm cutting out the tree shape. For the next Christmas ornament, I'm using this lace ribbon. To start with, I'm drawing the outline of a stocking. I'm placing strips of the lace ribbon onto the stocking, leaving the top blank as well as the heel and toe of the stocking. I'm pressing the lace into the clay, not too hard, just enough that it leaves a nice imprint when I peel it off. For the next one, I'm freehand drawing a circle 
and I'm taking this gold leaf pick from Dollar Tree and pressing it into the clay. I left all my ornaments out to dry. It was about 24 hours or so, and now I'm very lightly sanding down the edges to get rid of any rough patches. Now to decorate the ornaments. I'm using this gold glass paint that was gifted to me by Deco Art. This stuff is incredible. It is so shiny. I love the metallic look. I'm also using this Extreme Sheen Metallic Paint by Deco Art in the shade Copper. Using both of these paints, I'm adding to the textured areas of the ornaments and also filling in all the little designs that I created. I decided to stick with the copper and the gold for all these ornaments. I like the mix of the natural look with the clay ornament and then the more glam metallic paint. I especially love the look of the paint over top of these imprinted leaves and also the lace. I think the paint really brings these to life and enhances the textures. I have this thin gold ribbon and I'm using it to tie loops at the tops of all my ornaments so they can hang on the tree. And here I'm showing you how some of my ornaments turned out hanging on my tree. I think they look so nice and it was so fun and honestly pretty easy. This was my first time working with the air dry clay and I'm definitely gonna keep experimenting. This DIY is a hanging kissing ball. I'm using this styrofoam ball, which was 50 cents at the thrift store. You can also use a floral foam ball. You'll see I made a hook with the floral wire, but I do not recommend doing this if you're using a styrofoam ball because it was very difficult to get the wire through and I ended up not using it anyway. I have all of these evergreen tree branches and I'm using 11 pine cones for this project. I'm hot gluing all the pine cones around the styrofoam ball. I'm now hot gluing the greenery onto the ball around the pine cones. I'm taking this jute cord and wrapping it around the ball and tying it together at the top. I'll be using this to hang the kissing ball. I'm cutting off some berries from this berry pick and I'm sticking them into the kissing ball. You could also glue them in place if you wanted to. I wanna tame this a little bit, so I'm going around and trimming the branches into a bit more of a rounded shape. I definitely should have done this before gluing the pine cones onto the ball, but now I'm adding a snowy effect by painting decoupage glue onto the edges, then sprinkling salt on top. I'm also adding a bit of the glue to some of the berries to create the snowy effect on those as well. This DIY is a pine cone tree. For this DIY, I'm using three pine cones and I'm peeling off each of the pine cone pieces. What I should have done right away, but I did do eventually after getting a few pine cone cuts is cut off all the sharp bits of the pine cone with scissors. To make the tree, I'm using an empty cracker box. I'm cutting off the tabs of the box, then cutting the box in half. I'm rolling this piece of cardboard into a cone shape and hot gluing it in place. Now I'm cutting off the bottom of the cone so it'll sit flat on the table. Here is the finished cone along with our stash of pine cone pieces. Now it's time to hot glue all the pine cone pieces onto the cardboard cone. 
I'm placing the largest pieces on the bottom of the cone and saving the smaller pieces for the top. For the bottom row, I'm gluing each piece next to each other all around, slightly hanging off the bottom edge. For all the subsequent rows, focus the glue more on the top of the pinecone piece, pressing the top onto the cardboard cone, slightly overlapping the previous row. When I first tried this, I was gluing the second row of pieces onto the previous row, not touching the cone, and I quickly realized that was not going to work. If your pinecone pieces are not touching the cardboard cone, then your tree is going to keep getting wider and wider and it just won't look very nice and won't work as your tree. When you get to the top of the tree, try to line up all the little pieces so they're coming to a point. Once I covered the whole cone with pinecone pieces, I noticed there were a couple of places that seemed like they were a little bit lacking, so I'm adding some of my leftover pinecone pieces into those areas with hot glue. This DIY is a Christmas mason jar sign. I'm starting with this wooden mason jar from Dollar Tree. I'm taking off this twine bow on the top. I'm starting by painting the top and sides of the mason jar with red acrylic paint. I have this red and black buffalo check vinyl from Dollar Tree and I'm cutting it out the same size as the mason jar. Then I'm going to stick it onto the sign. I got a pack of Christmas themed felt words at Dollar Tree and I'm using this one in white that says joy for this sign. I'm just hot gluing it onto the mason jar. These Christmas stickers are also from Dollar Tree. I'm using two of the trees for this DIY and I'm painting them green with this green acrylic paint by Deco Art in the shade Holly Green. I thought the trees needed a little something else, so I'm using white acrylic paint and adding little dots on the trees. I have this small craft stick painted red with some Christmas berries on it. It was part of a DIY I did last year, and I'm using it at the top of my mason jar for a little decoration. I'm stringing three silver bells onto a strand of red and white baker's twine and tying it around the craft stick. Then I'm hot gluing this onto the top of the mason jar. I'm hot gluing the second tree sticker overlapping the first one so it gives it more of a three-dimensional look. I'm adding some line detail in black to the top of the mason jar to give it a bit more of a realistic look. I'm taking some pieces of twine and tying two bows, then hot gluing them together and gluing that to the top of the mason jar. This DIY is a Christmas wreath and I'm starting by using this wreath. I believe it was from Dollar Tree last year. It's just a metal wreath form with garland tied around it. And I'm also using a piece of cardboard and this galvanized joy sign from Dollar Tree. I'm going to cut out a strip of cardboard to go across my wreath. Now I'm cutting that cardboard piece out. And I'm taking this red and black buffalo check vinyl from Dollar Tree and cutting it to be the same size as my cardboard rectangle, then sticking it on top. I'm hot gluing this cardboard piece to the back of my wreath. And then I'm hot gluing this joy sign right in the middle. I'm taking this decoupage glue from Deco Art along with some salt and I'm painting all over my garland wreath with this decoupage glue and then sprinkling the salt on top to create a snowy effect. I did end up going back over some of the places and adding more glue and more salt because once the glue dried, I could see better which parts needed more snow. I have these two wooden bells from Dollar Tree and I'm going to paint them with this bright metallic paint from Deco Art in the shade Champagne Gold. For 
the top of my wreath, I'm going to add a couple of these small pine cones and I'm doing the same effect, going over them with the decoupage glue and then sprinkling lots of salt on top to make them all nice and snowy. I'm hot gluing these to the top of my wreath and also adding in some white and red berries in the middle. I'm hot gluing the two wooden bells together at a bit of an angle so the two holes at the top are overlapping. And then I'm taking this bundle of red berries and poking it through the hole and then gluing all of this to the bottom of the wreath. Now I'm decorating the rest of my wreath with a couple little pine cones and then some of the Christmas berries. I have this pack of decorative filler that has lots of mini pine cones and other things in here. And I'm taking some of these out and hot gluing them around the wreath. This DIY is a cute little jingle bell wreath ornament. I have this floral wire from Michaels and I'm cutting off about an 11 inch section of it. I'm using 34 bells for this ornament, a mixture of smaller ones and slightly larger ones. They all came from Dollar Tree and I'm weaving them onto my floral wire, alternating between a smaller bell and a larger bell. I got this idea from Frugal Family Homes blog and I thought it was so cute that I had to recreate it. By alternating the bells from smaller to larger, you can see they kind of all go together and end up beside each other and it ends up looking really full and nice. Depending on how large you want the ornament to be or if you want it to be a wall hanging, you just make your floral wire longer and add more bells. I'm twisting the two ends of the floral wire together a few times and wrapping them around, just making sure it's really secure and then I'm cutting off the excess. I have this red ribbon with white snowflakes on it from Dollar Tree, and I'm going to make a bow for the top of my wreath ornament. I'm cutting off a little section and making a loop, and this is gonna be how wide I want the bow to be, and then I'm hot gluing the loop together. Then I'm cutting off another piece of ribbon, slightly smaller, and making another loop, then hot gluing that on top of the first loop. And because this ribbon isn't wired, it's a little trickier to mold it into the shape that you want it to be. So I'm using hot glue and adding little dots of it in the middle and between the sections, then pinching the ribbon together until I get the shape of bow that I want. Now I'm cutting off two more pieces of the ribbon for the tails of the bow. I'm hot gluing my bow to the bell wreath. I thought it was kind of missing something, so I'm taking one of these little white berries and hot gluing it to the center of the bow. Then I'm using this red and white baker's twine and I'm making a loop to hang the ornament on the tree. Next, we're making some DIY hot glue snowflake ornaments. I started out by tracing two snowflakes onto paper from my laptop, and I freehand drew another one below the first two. I'm putting a clear silicone mat over top of the paper. Later on in the video, I will show you what you can use if you don't have a silicone mat. I got colored glitter glue sticks from Dollar Tree, and I'm using those for some of my hot glue snowflake ornaments. I'll also be showing you later on how to make colorful glittery snowflakes with regular hot glue. With my snowflake drawing underneath, I'm tracing the snowflake with my hot glue gun using a gold glue stick. For the first snowflake, I'm going to create a few layers with multiple colors, starting with gold. 
you can create so many different kinds of snowflakes. You can either look up inspiration online and copy them, or you can put the paper on your laptop screen and trace them. Just keep in mind, snowflakes are supposed to have six sides, but other than that, you can totally get creative with it. I switched to a silver hot glue stick and it created this effect where the remnants of the gold glue mixed with the silver and I really like how it looks. I'm peeling off this snowflake and I'm going to create the other layers starting with a silver design to go on top. Now I'm creating the last layer of this snowflake, making a small design for the center with red glitter hot glue. Once all the three layers are dry, I'm hot gluing them together. If you don't have a clear silicone mat, there are a few other options. You could either use a clear plastic bag like a Ziploc, or you can use a piece of parchment paper like I'm doing here. I'm taking a snowflake drawing and placing it underneath the parchment paper. Now I'm doing the exact same thing as before, tracing over the design with my hot glue gun. I found there was no difference between the two methods. Both worked great, so whatever you have on hand will be perfect. Now to show you how you can create pretty designs and colors without colored hot glue, I'm creating a few snowflakes using regular clear hot glue. There is a bit of color and sparkle in some of them as it does take a while for all the colored hot glue to come out of the glue gun, but we can ignore that because it'll all be covered up. For the first clear snowflake, I'm using this gold glass paint from DecoArt and painting it all over my snowflake. I love this paint because of how metallic it is. I did a couple coats to cover the whole thing and to give it a bold metallic look. For the next clear snowflake, I'm covering it with decoupage glue. You could also use Mod Podge or any clear craft glue. Then I'm taking this glittery fake snow from Dollar Tree and I'm sprinkling it all over the snowflake. This gives such a pretty icy look. I love it. For the next clear snowflake, I'm painting it with this silver metallic paint from DecoArt. Once it's dry, I'm covering it with the same decoupage glue and the fake snow again. Having a silver base to the glittery snow gives it a slightly different look than the one with no paint underneath. I really like the variety. You could do this with so many different colors and they would all look so good together. To keep the glitter in place, I'm going over both ornaments with a layer of hairspray. I'm painting another clear snowflake with the same silver metallic paint. I wanted this one to have a bit more of a subtle sparkle to it. So once it's dry, I'm going over it with this glittery dust paint that is clear once it dries, leaving lots of tiny little sparkles behind. To hang the snowflakes, I'm attaching pieces of glittery silver and gold string to the backs of them. I'm making loops out of the string, then adding dabs of hot glue to the back and sticking them on. I'm hanging them on my Christmas tree, but you could also hang them around the house or on your windows all winter. This is such an easy last minute craft and it can be customized in so many ways. I even left one of the snowflakes just completely blank with the clear hot glue and I still think it looks really cool, especially with the Christmas lights shining behind. The next Christmas DIY we're going to recreate is this Christmas countdown sign, which is $33. I'm using this stretched canvas from Dollar Tree, and I'm cutting off the canvas from the frame, then trimming the canvas. I'm sanding the frame, and I'm staining it with this oak gel stain. When I made this project, it was actually my first time using the stain, and I didn't know how much to put on. I didn't realize you don't need to put on this much, just brush on some of it, then wipe it with a cloth. I'm creating the Christmas countdown in Cricut Design Space. The word Christmas is in the Halloween Dreams script font, and the word countdown is in the Magical Mystery font, both from dafont.com. I'm ungrouping the word Christmas and deleting the letter I. Now I'm inserting a Christmas tree SVG and putting it in the place of the I. 
I made a rectangle the size of the canvas to give me an idea how big I want to make my design. I'm adding the numbers 1 to 24 along with an SVG of Santa and his reindeer. I used the slice tool to make Christmas countdown into two stencils because I'll be painting them on the canvas. I cut everything out and now I'm weeding it and sticking them onto the canvas. I'm using this red acrylic paint from Dollar Tree and a green paint from DecoArt to paint the word Christmas on the canvas. I actually do not recommend you do this part if you recreate this. The reason I made it into a stencil is because I didn't have the colors of vinyl that I wanted the words to be. However, you will see the lines are not very crisp from the paint and I end up having to fix it. If you have red and green vinyl, I definitely recommend using that instead. Here you can see it doesn't really look the best, so I'm going over all the edges of the letters with a red fine liner pen and this cleans it up and makes it look so much better. I'm doing the same thing with Countdown, going over the outline with a green fine liner. Another thing I will say is if you do go the painting route, be patient while it dries and be careful not to smudge. I did have a couple smudges from the paint near the top of the sign, which were kind of hard to fix. I did cover a lot of it up with the frame, but that's just another reason I recommend using vinyl for the letters. I'm sticking the December calendar to the canvas. I'm trimming the canvas down even more. I laid the frame down on top as a guide to figure out how much I needed to cut off. For our daily marker, I'm making a mini wreath out of this pipe cleaner garland and a few berries from this berry garland. To start, I'm making a circle out of floral wire. Then I'm wrapping the pipe cleaner around the wire. This wasn't a regular pipe cleaner with the wire inside. It was a lot more flimsy, so it was really easy to wrap around the floral wire. But if you're using regular pipe cleaner, you could probably even skip the floral wire part. I'm hot gluing the ends in place, then adding a couple of red berries to the wreath. I'm taking this red and white string and I'm tying a bow to add to the bottom of the wreath. Now I'm hot gluing the frame to the canvas. I added a push pin above the number one, then hung the wreath on it. Every day in December, I'll move the pin over and hang the wreath on the next day. Thank you so much for watching this video. Make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more. See you next time.